The last uh, talk of the session, we will hear Francesco Di Renzo about uh, progress in the timber regularization. Okay, thank you. After two beautiful uh, talks about the same subject, uh, some, um, some argument will come for free. So, I still think the timber is, uh, can give you some good understanding. Okay, let me make this point later. This is work done in collaboration with Giovanni Ruzzi at the moment, but we started together with Luigi Scorzato, which is really made uh, a lot of the work uh, on this subject and it's always a pleasure to uh, give this tribute to a friend of mine and also Marco was involved. Everything started with Witten as any as you probably understood from the previous speaker as well and then I was fascinated about this fact that completely independently our group and the group in Japan by Yoshio Kikukawa were doing exactly the same. Funny. Uh, so, my agenda will be a, a, a Monte Carlo algorithm in order to take into account complete flow line as basic degrees of freedom while integrating on tingles. Then I will touch a, a couple of new application in gauge theory. One is QCD in zero plus one dimension. This is fine because uh, in, in this case we need a solution for the multi timbal uh, problem. In that case, uh, uh, we have to integrate on multiple timbles, but we can track down what are the relevant amounts. <coughs> and then I will simply touch uh, at the most uh, uh, basic uh, level uh, something which is uh, a little bit more of space-time, mm? uh, although in only two dimension. So the idea is that your integral, your observable, your field theory observable in this simple approach is decomposed in different contribution. Each is an integral, and you have to integrate on these symbols. Each timbal is, is attached to critical points. On each timbal, the imaginary part of the action stays constant. And that's why it's a winning story. Okay? So what is the timbal in the end, you have already been told, is the union either of all the steepest ascent path uh, starting in the remote parts from past from the critical points, or they are descents ending up at infinity at the critical points. You can always look at that from the two point of view. In any case, you are moving, let's see, this, this is the complexification, complexification of the original manifold. That's the point. So why uh, this figure is important, this has already been uh, shown several times in the previous talks, there is nothing magical, as also Paolo was pointing out, concerning this. If you uh, single out the good region, the region of convergence of your integral, then, since you are dealing with the uh, homomorphic function, the sum of, for example, of all these four uh, paths is going to give you a zero integral, so that you can express one of these as a combination of the others. And this is nothing but the basis uh, of the homology. Uh, the good point of this basis provided by the Tingle is that over them, the imaginary part of the action stays constant. Also, this uh, and combination this uh, linear com uh, the coefficient of the linear combination, they are integral. Okay? So why I'm still interested in this guy, the timbal? Well, this should be thought as the critical point, and then there are the steepest attempt standing out. That's the image, and that's why I think everything is, uh, <coughs> this uh, stuff is called timbal stuff. Okay? So what's the manifold? It's something with, that locally looks like Rn. What does locally mean? that in principle you should know the tangent space at each point, and then in terms of that tangent space, uh, uh, you, you can parameterize each point on the timbal uh, in terms of that natural basis which is associated to that uh, basis, okay? To the coordinates, sorry, which are associated to that basis. You know that coordinate at that basis at the critical point, because the tangent space is spanned by what are called the Tagachi vector of the action of the theory. Okay? Uh, in other points, well, in other points, you have to follow the evolution of the basis, in principle, uh, which is dictated by this equation. Mm? So each vector of the basis can be moved along the timbal, and you recover the basis at a new point, which is, of course, expensive, as Paolo was pointing out before. Also notice 
that uh, this natural basis uh, uh, require a change of variable out of which you are left with the determinant. If the basis <coughs> is the orthonormal one, that is a phase. Okay? And this is what we refer to as the residual phase, which is the remnant of the fact that there was some phase uh, uh, around from the very beginning. Now, a natural way of taking into account this residual phase is by reweighting. Mm? So you define your integrals in terms of integrating on the timber with the correct quote unquote coordinates and the, your, your action uh, providing you a good measure. A measure which is in principle good also for Monte Carlo. Okay, uh, I will specify in the following to the case in which there is one single thing, so I will drop uh, this, uh, uh, where, where is this, uh, both the double angle notation and the footer sigma, mm? but believe me, it's not going to change, and that is uh, the integral I want to compute. In the end, I want to compute something which is a reweighting procedure. Okay, uh, now, uh, what we want to do is we want to change the parameterization on the timbal, and uh, we say to each timbal, uh, we can make, for each point on the timbal, we can make a correspondence which is entailed by a direction and a time. This simply means uh, you start from the critical point along this direction, one of those you can obtain from the basis you know at the tangent space, and then you flow up. Uh, you flow till a given flow time, and that is going to single out the uh, point of the timbre for you. Okay? So the idea is that uh, uh, this map is known near the critical point, uh, and this solution, this is a generic point solution uh, of uh, the flow near the critical point, uh, something which is uh, known, and that is a good uh, uh, initial condition for your flow line. Okay? Uh, notice that uh, these n are properly normalized, of course, in order to single out the direction. Okay? So how can we uh, proceed now? We want to go to an integral which is explicitly over directions and flow line. And the answer, well, you play some sort of Fadeyev Popov trick, which means you simply rewrite one in a funny way which entails the definition of a determinant. Mm -hmm. The end of the story is that your partition function on that partition function on that timbre is expressed as a combination of partition function, each is attached to a direction. Okay? And uh, it turns out that you can compute the Zn. It is an integral over T, the flow time, of course. In which, okay, there is a prefactor which knows about the direction uh, you leave the critical point along which, and then uh, there is an effective uh, action in which, guess what? It's just what also Paolo was uh, finding. You find uh, the log of the determinant of the basis, which is the transported one along the, the manifold. Okay, so it's tough, but it is solvable. Okay, so what's the point? Now I can rewrite my original integral again as a sum of contribution. Each contribution is coming from one complete flow line, and this is the definition of that. In a sense, I'm taking dz, a new z, defining a new expectation value. I have to average many expectation values of that time along complete flow line, and you superpose along all the directions. This is good because we have a new average. This is good because staying on the timbre now is trivial. You simply follow the flow. But, of course, it's a funny measure. Okay? Still, as uh, uh, funny as it is, uh, we start with, with crude Monte Carlo. And even with crude Monte Carlo and this representation, we could solve the Cairo randomatic model. Now the point is, can you do better than this and go for a Monte Carlo sampling this measure? Okay? The answer is yes. Because uh, for Gaussian uh, timbles, that means that the action is quadratic everywhere and the timbal is flat, the expression for Zn is known, and it is this single one. And then you play a trick you always uh, tell your student. Hmm? Suppose you want to sample this probability density, then I compute capital F, then I invert it, uh, you provide a flat 
random number, I compute f to the minus one from that number, and that is uh, is attracted according to this. Okay? How can we proceed? Okay, you are sitting on a direction now and you want to pick a new one. You leave everything as it is, but you pick up a couple of components, thanks, a couple of components uh, which in a convenient uh, reference, uh, uh, reference frame can always be seen as uh, uh, expressed in terms of one single angle, the angle phi. Okay? So you can think of a partition function for a direction which is the one uh, you are sitting on and in which you change uh, these two components, everything is singled out by providing a value for this angle phi. Okay? Out of this, you can define the probability, and this is the probability uh, with which you are playing this trick. Everything, of course, uh, has to be done numerically, but can be done because this integral, where it is, uh, is the one, is uh, uh, very well converging. Okay? So the new algorithm is, looks like this. Uh, you are sitting on a direction, then you pick a new one, which is at it, but at the thermal equilibrium with the other by playing around the trick I was referring to before. And then starting for the new, from the new direction, we perform the complete ascent, ascent okay? with a complete theory. Uh, you compute this Zn, the complete Zn prime, and then you are check, reject by metropolis. Okay? So you are uh, simply playing around with the metropolis in which the proposal is not flat, but is dictated by the solution of the Gaussian problem. It works, at least for random metric model. Uh, this is a point, which is this one, which has already been, com had already been computed, but look at the statistics, very difficult. This point would, be, uh, would have been completely uh, impossible to compute by flat Monte Carlo. By Monte Carlo okay? And this is only a factor of 10 of statistics. Mm? So it's good, uh, it's better, where this, uh, the, the problem is worse. Okay, what about SUN? Well, the basic setup has already uh, been presented by other authors working with large events. Mm? Uh, so you have a, a, an algebra representation, you exponentiate a data point from the group. Now the coefficient in front became uh, become uh, complex, and you are left with uh, an element of SL instead of SU. Okay. Well. Uh, now uh, the natural derivative is the, the lead derivative and you can define either steeper ascent or steeper descent, it depends uh, in terms of this. So this is the uh, equation uh, Paolo was also pointing out and Julia before that gets translated into this uh, for this uh, uh, setting of lead groups. Okay, <coughs> be careful because now lead derivative they inherit commutational relation of the group they are attached to. But apart from that, uh, in the flow, everything is still fine, so the action is still growing along the, uh, if you follow the evolution dictated by the equation I was pointing out before, and the imaginary part of the action is constant. So, all in all, the only thing you have to care about is that by now, the evolution of the vectors is uh, a little bit more complicated. There is uh, one other contribution on top of what you had uh, before, uh, which is dictated once again by the uh, constant structure constant. Okay? Having said that, uh, we could approach uh, QCD in zero plus one dimension. Okay? This is fine because okay, it's already an application, you have the determinant, you have no space time, so everything boils down to Fermi determinant, as in other matter presented even before. Of course, you can find a solution in a convenient gauge. Everything is reduced, as for the partition function, uh, uh, to a single integration over SU3. Okay? But this is fun because, OK, you have uh, uh, observable you want to compute, but A, uh, you know the exact results. But B, you know the three critical points. They are the exact three roots. And you can compute. Uh, uh, the semi classical approximation attached to each critical point. Of course, the exact solution does not know anything about the critical points. Semi classical approximation is dedicated to each. Okay? So there is a different contribution for each. What does it mean? Okay, start from, okay, this is a success. Okay, NF equals 12. Now, 
uh, different values of mass, and you can reproduce the chiral condensate, Polyakov, and anti Polyakov loop. Okay? Uh, this comes out of uh, taking into account all the contribution. And on each, we play the same trick I was referring to before. Be careful. There are cases, uh, take into account, for example, nf equals 6 and this value of the mass. This is a, a, the ratio of the logarithm of the contribution to the partition function attached to different critical points. Okay? So this is the critical point attached to the, the, z, uh, to the uh, root on the real axis. And these are the other two, which are equal in modulus. At this value of mu over t, you expect a very important contribution coming from the other timbal, which is exactly what you see. If you take into account only one timbal, then you fail. Uh, you remember, it's the value 3. Uh, by taking everything into account, you succeed. Not the error bar here. Mm? We still have some uh, problem with staying uh, with a good interpreter in, uh, in good integration in certain regions. There are cases in which, again, you fail. Now we expect to fail here at 0, but even at 3, which is the case here. This is 0, uh, near 0, this is near 3. Everything is cured, this time with a very good signal as well. OK, let's move to something which has a space-time structure. What is going to happen? Well. You have to change your picture. Now the old pinball picture is no more valid. Simply because uh, for each critical point, well, there is always an orbit coming together, which are the gaze transform of that critical point. So the new picture is this one. Instead of the critical point, you have an orbit attached to that critical point. And then, OK, uh, the notion of a non-general critical submanifold would be needed and all that. But the concrete idea have, uh, could be, in a sense, understood by this picture. I will make this point again. Notice that to each point of the, uh, of the orbit, uh, orbit uh, you can find, for each point you can find a basis, you will find uh, zero a uh, Tagachi vector, Tagachi vector, that will be uh, the direction leading along which you follow the orbit. And then you have positive Tagachi vector, Tagachi values, sorry, following the Tagachi vector associated to which you are going to ascend. Okay? Well, all in all, you can still formulate the timbal, and the other good point to ta be taken into account is that. Uh, in principle, you have SL gauge transformation, okay? But the steepest ascent or steepest descent are only covariant if you pick up gauge transformation of the original group, SU3, okay? So all in all, this is an oversimplification, but this is the picture to be taken into account. Instead of a critical point, you have uh, an orbit. Attached to each point of the orbit, there is a tangent space. Along some direction, you follow the orbit. Uh, along other direction, the action is going to go. Then, is to if you perform a, a gain transformation here, uh, that is the same gain transformation that you have to take into account to connect those two points. Which means, you say this critical point, you ascend, then you make a, a gain transformation. Then, if you descend from that, you end up not in this point, but in one point of the orbit, which is connected by just this piece of formation. Okay? Okay, so far so good. So, what is the application? Is SU2 in two dimensions, which is known. Okay? So, I will skip all this. We all know that we can find problems with torons. That's why uh, it is the twist heater solution, the relevant one, hmm? in terms uh, of uh, the critical, uh, the classical background, if you want. OK? Hmm? Uh, but OK, we know, we know everything. Now, just a little intermezzo. Uh, Langevin is, in principle, a good, uh, a good uh, simulation algorithm for the timbal. Why? Because uh, the drift takes you on the timbal by definition. But you need to extract noise on the tangent space. OK? This can be difficult. It can be a very easy if uh, the relevant region of the functional integral can be deformed 
to end up on top of the tangent space at the critical point, which is connected with what Paolo was also telling before. Okay? It's just this uh, uh, naive uh, cartoon which is relevant. Huh? So you can get an important contribution and then other stuff which are not interested in because the measure is going to depress that contribution. Hmm? So this is the reference to Andre and, uh, and Paolo. Huh? So they, they ended up, in a sense, uh, uh, to something which is similar. Huh? They, 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 they put even forward huh? uh, that approach, as we, as we know, as we heard before. Hmm? So how is this uh, Gaussian approximation working for SU2 in two dimensions? Well, uh, you get a good signal. Remember that it's not really a timbre, so the imaginary part is not constant, and you have to reweight. Uh, this signal is good, but is out of the correct result. If you take into account the reweighting, then apparently you stay uh, uh, and you fluctuate along that uh, around uh, this uh, correct result. This is still very preliminary, but this is a very funny Monte Carlo. You know, it's a Monte Carlo in which you extract both uh, the configuration and the uh, the noise, basically not taking into account any gauge copies. It's funny. So, uh, conclusion, well, basically, is that there is still a huge amount to be done. Uh, in any case, we have now a Monte Carlo in, for Timbos in terms of complete full lines. We have at least one case in which we can deal with SU3, and we, we take into account a different Timbos to correctly reproduce result. And we also have uh, performed a few steps in the direction of real space time. Let me end with this. Uh, we are going to have a school organized in Parma early in September. Till 10th of August, the application are still open. All this left timber stuff is part of a wider a subject which has to do, in, to, uh, so in some uh, sense, to resurgence theory. Uh, theory. Uh, theory sorry. Okay. By the way, Julia is lecturing on lattice and timber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A little bit. Sure. Sorry. So I get a little confused when you call this a Gaussian approximation. Why is it an approximation? Is it a legitimate manifold to integrate all? Yeah, it's a, an approximation to the timbre. From the point of view of the timbre, it is an approximation. But, it's not but you collect the, the same theory. result provided you can deform it. Good. That and that way. Well, it is Gaussian because uh, well, it is the timbre associated to a If there are no other... No, no, there is one, there is one. Uh, <coughs> how do you jump from one thing to another? Uh, in our approach, you don't jump. You compute contribution attached to each, and then you sum. Okay, then how do you know all the thing Again, there are cases in which uh, you, you know the uh, settled points, then the uh, semi-classical computation, which is not just e to the minus half s, okay, is a real semi-classical approximation. Uh, in the case of QCD zero plus one, in that case it was really clear what uh, the fact that you need more, you need more than one thing. Mm -hmm. Then of course you have to fix the coefficient. In principle, there is a procedure to do that, uh, which is some sort of a renormalization procedure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end, there is a caveat. Of course, this can be a, a, a tricky point. But the good point is that those coefficients that then stays the same for a while. Technically, this means uh, as long as you do not cross a Stoke phenomena in the parameter space of the field. That is a more correct answer. Thank you very much. So let's thank the speaker and all the speakers again. <laughs> A very last announcement, there is also an opening for a PhD position in Parma. If you know people <laughs> interested in, also in Swansea, also in Swansea. So both Swansea and Parma, uh, we, have been, we are offering a PhD position. Application team? The, uh, the same problem with the LLR method. Sorry? Uh, the same problem with the LLR method. 
。OK， 大家来。